So we're going to talk about the, the the nesting spec in particular. Um, but I won't, since not everybody knows what the what the CSS process is for creating new specifications in CSS, and I wanted to go real quick. Right. So um, the the first thing that we we end up with is like this crazy idea, and this thing this crazy idea is called stage one of the specification, or sorry, stage zero of the specification, just a crazy idea. Somebody writes it up in sort of like the spec format, but it is just some um, idea of what they want to do, right? Um, then we have editor's draft. Uh, these are the first time it'll actually show up on the W3C website. Uh, stage one is just editor's draft. It's considered to be really unstable specification. Um, then it'll go to stage two, which is working draft. Um, a lot of working drafts um, end up being implemented in browsers, sometimes behind a flag, uh, sometimes with like a browser prefix. Um, and and I mean, way back when, working drafts got implemented just you know in in browsers uh, all the time. Um, and the thing that we're most uh, used to is stage three. Oops, stage three, which is the candidate recommendation. Right, this is a full. Uh, full-blown spec, um, and you're completely safe to implement that just in your browser. And of course, once it's in the browsers, you know we can start using it, right? Um, the CSS nesting spec uh, became a stage one spec last uh, March, uh, 2019. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where we are. So um, but the, the really neat thing uh, about this is that the um, once I get a few more slides into this, I'm going to show you how we can actually use uh, this nesting spec uh, today. Um, and basically, we're going to be transpiling, you know, this future spec into regular old CSS that you can use on any site. So, um, so one of the problems with CSS um, is you end up with a lot of duplicate selectors. Um, if you've got a, a selector that you want to add some properties to it, um, but then you also need to modify that depending, depending on a conditional, like a media query, um, you need to rewrite the name of the selector inside your media query. And if you need to do hover and focus styles, you need to rewrite the media, the, the selector um, again and again. Um, and so there's just a lot of uh, duplication uh, here, uh, and this becomes brittle too because um, if you're like rewriting this file or like change this class name from wrapper to something else, you may miss like the focus uh, line down here, and then you've changed all the other selectors, but you missed that one line, right? Um, and the nesting uh, spec sort of aims to solve this, and it solves it in a way if, if you're familiar with SAS, it's going to look uh, fairly similar. Um, there we go. So the CSS nesting spec uh, adds in a couple of new syntaxes, which is the at nest, uh, which is here at the beginning of this, uh, this second line here. Um, and it also adds in the ampersand. Um, people who've used SAS will recognize the ampersand and they're not gonna recognize the at nest. But the at nest basically says somewhere in the selector, I'm going to have an ampersand. And what you should do is take any, any parent uh, selectors and take this whole thing and play, replace it where the ampersand is, right? So you, this at nest tells the browsers that I want to change this rule to be HTML.js space dot wrapper, right? So it, treats this line and this as equivalent. Can you see my uh, my cursor when I'm circling these things? Hopefully you are. Um, I'll make sure that I, I do it relatively slowly so if there's a video lag, it doesn't get lost. We actually don't see your cursor. You Good. don't see my cursor. Okay, so I will not refer to my cursor anymore then. <laughs> Maybe you could describe what your cursor was gonna <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I was just saying that the the second uh, selector on the left hand side is equivalent to this second selector on the right hand side. Right? So um, the browsers will treat those as equivalent rule sets. Right? Um, now for media queries, um, you don't need an at nest here because 
usually media queries are at the root level of your CSS file, right? They're never nested in something, you know, according to, you know, uh, the current specs. But when you put a media query inside another CSS uh, rule set, the spec knows that you're wanting to nest it, right? You want to take the entire parent uh, selector and move that inside the media query. So over on the right hand side where it says at media min width 40 M, since it's nested inside the dot wrapper, it's gonna treat that as equivalent to um, the left hand side here where it says at media min width 40 M and then inside the brackets, you have dot wrapper and that rule set there. Right? Um, and then last, I'm gonna show you how the ampersand can be used uh, for hover and focus styles. So earlier we'd used just the, the, the ampersand uh, HTML.js space ampersand, and it just gets creates a new selector HTML.js space dot wrapper. That's the equivalent here because there's no space in between the ampersand and the colon hover. Um, it just gets mushed together, right? So um, this equivalent of at nest ampersand colon hover becomes uh, dot wrapper colon hover. So you can see on the left-hand side, the equivalent of old school CSS and this new CSS nesting equivalent on the right-hand side. So it's fairly easy. Now, if you use SAS, and I love SAS, SAS is, is great. Um, you're probably thinking, why do you need the at nest there? Um, it's like in, in, in SAS, it's almost identical, except there's no at nest at all. It's like not needed. Um, and it turns out that we do need it for uh, CSS, um, like official CSS. Uh, and that is because of something called a look ahead parsing that the browsers do for perform performance reasons. Um, when they're reading, when a browser is reading the CSS file, um, the current way that it parses all the CSS is it's, it only has to look one character ahead at most to figure out what am I looking at right now, right? So as it's reading the file, um, let's let's take this this SAS example and see if this would work in a browser, right? So ah, my extra light fell over. Oh well. Um, the yeah. So let's look at this. This is standard SAS right here. This is not going to work for our CSS spec though. Um, dot wrapper. Uh, so when the browser sees the period, it knows ah. Oh, this is a CSS class, right? So as it's reading the file character by character, it already knows it's looking at a CSS class that this is a selector it's reading and it keeps going and it sees a space and a bracket and it goes, okay, this is the beginning of a rule set, right? And then it goes to the next line and it sees an H and it goes, hmm, that could be the beginning of a property that begins with H, I'm not sure. And then T and M and L and still it has no idea that this is a, in SAS, this would be a nested rule set. But in CSS, it doesn't know if that's a property. Like there, there aren't any existing properties that begin with HT, but maybe in the future, we would have a new CSS property that does begin with HT. And therefore the browser has to be, has to be compatible, forward compatible with new CSS syntax. And it just has to assume that maybe there is an existing property that I don't know about because I'm an old browser and there's a new spec. So it doesn't know, it literally doesn't know be between whether this is supposed to be nesting or if this is a property and that's bad. So that's why we can't have this SAS style of nesting. We, we have to put the ampersand nest there so that when it sees inside dot wrapper bracket and it sees an ampersand side, it goes, oh, this is either gonna be a nested conditional or a an actual like at nest, so like at media or um, or at nest, right? So that's why we have to have the at nest syntax inside uh, prefixing our, our nested rule sets. Right? So um, I've actually been playing with this uh, for a while. Um, oh, but actually I wanted to, I forgot I had this slide in here. There's actually one case where you don't need the at nest. And that's when the ampersand comes first in your nested selector, right? So if your ampersand is first, 
our our parser can figure that out. It goes, oh, look, there's an ampersand there. I know that that is a special nesting syntax, and it's going to know that this is a, a simple at nest. Um, so uh, the at nest is optional in this case. You could put at nest space ampersand space span as your selector, or in this case, you could just do ampersand space span. Right? Because that ampersand is there first, we can use a simpler syntax. Um, I've been playing around with this for a while in my CSS style sheets. Kind of like having at nest specifically there for all the use cases, because it makes those nested rule sets pop out better for me, right? Because I've got like all these, these uh, properties that are usually on the parent selector and then the nested selector with the at nest there, it really pops out and says, this is a new selector. It's not just more of the same properties from the parent selector. So I kind of like it, but you can use the simpler syntax uh, for at span. And speaking of how do you use it, um, let's take a look at this website. This is this is like one of my favorite websites now. It's called cssdb.org. Um, it is a list of all of the CSS specs that are coming up um, and how far they are in the the process of um, of the being becoming a full fledged spec. Right? I'm actually going to jump over to my browser and show you this website directly. Um, so you can see all of these different specifications. So there's an all property. There's um, break properties, break inside, break before, break after. And it says what stage of the specification process they're in. Um, and then we also have color adjust property, all of this stuff that it lists. The nice thing is that um, it will also list ways that you can write this in your CSS right now if there's a plugin available to allow you to do that. So for example, the focus container pseudo class. Um, this is actually really great, uh, really great selected that I like using focus within. Um, it's supported by these browsers. Uh, so it already has the can I use sort of information right there. And then it says that if you need a polyfill, you can use this JavaScript library to uh, polyfill for various browsers or this post CSS plugin. Um, post CSS, not everybody knows what post CSS is, um, but I'm pretty sure that 99% of you have heard of auto prefixer. This is the tool that will add vendor prefixes to your CSS. Um, auto prefixer is actually the very first post CSS plugin that was ever created. It was created before they came up with the name post CSS as a group of plugins. Uh, all of these post CSS plugins do is they transform your your source CSS and transform it into real production ready CSS. So that's what auto, auto prefixer and vendor prefixes to all of your CSS. Um, these other post CSS plugins uh, will take your source CSS files and transform into production ready um, CSS, right? So somewhere down the bottom here, we're gonna have level one and actually, yeah, there's the nesting spec, right? Um, and it has a post CSS plugin um, that you can use that transforms this into CSS that all browsers can understand right now. Um, post CSS is pretty easy to configure. Um, I've um, using something like this uh, right now um, on some of my projects, although I've moved my browsers list into a browser .rc file, I forget what file name is, I just did that recently. Um, but it's really easy to, um, to set up. There's a, there's a sort of conglomerate uh, post CSS plugin, it's called post CSS preset ENV. Um, and it takes all the, all the CSS specifications that are you know, on track to becoming a real specification get bundled together in this one giant plugin called post CSS preset AMV. Um, and then you can just basically specify in the sin, uh, in your configuration of this plugin, like I want to support all stage one and later specs um, in my source CSS files, right? So this is super easy to set up and this would, this will add uh, nesting CSS to your files already today. Um, I set up a code pen. Um, CodePen is really nice in that it actually will allow you to play with post CSS. Um, so you can fork this code pen and start playing with the nesting syntax um, yeah, just right there on the website. 
Um, this is uh, some some simple CSS that I uh, copied from another place. There's a, a listing from where I got the original idea for writing the art. Uh, or actually, I mean, I just I copied it. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the, you should be able to play that. Um, and one last thing I want to say. It's actually going to jump back into my browser here, um, and that is. This is a level one spec, um, and it is not 100% uh, complete, obviously. Uh, one of the things that's not fully formed yet is that media query nesting. Um, the media query nesting is, is a little more complicated spec-wise because there's this whole other spec called the conditional, the CSS conditional spec, and that's the one that controls um, you know, media queries, um, and, and like at supports, that is also controlled by that spec. Um, and so we need to modify that spec a little bit to understand, you know, this nesting spec. And so that part of it just hasn't been worked out and hasn't been fully fleshed out yet. Um, and there is a discussion group um, that I would love people to contribute to because there's there's been three comments in the last two years on this. Uh, Jonathan Neal. Um, Amelia and uh, myself, um, yeah, and if we can get more people sort of looking at this and helping the spec uh, move forward, um, that would be great. So, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about uh, about CSS nesting. So, yeah, amazing. Thank.